Good morning everyone, how are you doing? It's Paul here from Unusual Things. Now this morning I am in Kensal Green Cemetery in London and we've come to find the final resting place of Steve Peregrine Took. I think I've said that correctly. Now he was part of the founding member, along with Mark Bolan, of T-Rex of course. Um, great musician, so I'll tell you a little bit more about him real soon. So if you're a massive T-Rex fan today, make sure you stay tuned. Uh, if you like the video please give it a thumbs up uh, if you haven't done so already maybe subscribe to the channel it is absolutely free it doesn't cost you a bean it just costs you a second of your time um and also leave your comments down below because i like to read the comments i've got a jacket on and we're in what july it's cold but it's um 7 37 in the morning had to do a little bit of urban exploring technique to get in here you know because uh the fence was open so you had to do my contortionist act to get through um yeah so i'll tell you a little bit more now about steve peregrine took and um yeah hope you enjoy the video steve peregrine took born stephen ross porter 28th of july 1914 to the 27th of october 1980 was an english musician and songwriter best known for his membership of the duo tyrannosaurus rex with mark bolan Took was born Stephen Ross Porter in Altham, London, on the 28th of July 1949 and attended Shooters Hill School. It took his name from the character Peregrine Took, a hobbit in J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings. At the age of 17, having played drums for some months with a mod band named Waterproof Sparrows, he answered an advert in Melody Maker for Tyrannosaurus Rex, the electric band that Mark Bolan was forming, following his departure from John's Children. After one disastrous concert at the Electric Garden in London, Bolan and Took reduced the band to a duo, busking in subways on acoustic guitar and bongos. Took having been obliged to sell his full drum kit to pay the rent until the paying gigs started coming in. The Flower Power Unit, championed by John Peel onto the club and stage circuit, had thence into the record shops, released three albums and achieved two top 40 hits. Took contributed harmony, backing vocals, which are more noticeable in live recordings than they are studio recordings, and provided bongos, African drums, kazoo, pixie phone, and Chinese gong. Took's arrangements contributed to transforming Boland's music from the straightforward rock and roll it previously been into an exotic brew of musical styles designed to appeal to Boland's new audience of hippies. Towards the end of his time in the band, and as Boland began returning to electric guitar, Took returned to a full drum set and also contributed some bass guitar parts. The band's producer, Tony Visconti, credited Took with much of the sound and success of Tyrannosaurus Rex. In an interview for the documentary Mark Bolan, The Final Word, Visconti said that Mark and Steve were a true 50-50 partnership. Steve was a remarkable musician. He could play many instruments. He played percussion. He could pick up a bass or guitar. He would also sometimes play some cello parts. And then his backing vocals were great too. Took developed his own songwriting and in early 1969 with recording complete on Tyrannosaurus Rex's third album, Unicorn, Took suggested to Bolan that the duo could perform some of his own material. Bolan refused. By this time their lifestyles were in direct conflict. Bolan was living quietly with his wife-to-be June Child, while Took was rapidly forging links with revolutionary underground acts such as the Deviants and the Pretty Things. The relationship was badly deteriorating, Bolin barely tolerated Took's drug use and Steve Mann recalled that it was clear they cordially detested each other. After being sacked by Bolin, Took formed a prototype version of the Pink Fairies with Twink and Mick Farron recently ousted from his own band The Deviants. The band was named in honour of a drinking club of the same name the three had formed earlier that year, along with other leading lights of the underground scene. Together with Twink's girlfriend, Silver Darling, they performed what Farron would later describe as less of a gig and more of a protracted hiranaig. At the University of Manchester in October 1969, which rapidly dissolved into chaos, 
Took appeared prominently on Farron's first solo album, Mona, The Carnivious Circus, recorded December 1969 and released 1970. Twink and the other ex-Deviants then formed a new band called the Pink Fairies Mark II, without Took or Farron. Took had one son in early 1970s with partner Lindsay Tunstall, a.k.a. Lou. Took had also relationships with, among others, Valerie, Sam, Billet, 1979-1980, Drug Baroness, Gertrude Dufresne, 1977-1978, a woman called Angie, 1969-1971, and Tracy Inder, the mother of Paul Lemmy's son, Paul Inder, to whom Took was a stepfather figure during the relationship 1974-1976, as he later also was to Billet's daughter. Steve Took died on Monday the 27th of October 1980 at 14 Clydesdale House, 255 Westbourne Park, Road Notting Hill. Age 31. In a masonette he shared with Bullet and her younger daughter, as a consequence of the intervention by Best. Now once again Took's manager, royalty checks for the Tyrannosaurus Rex Blue Thumb American releases had been arriving periodically and Took had received one that week. The day prior to his death, Took purchased morphine and hallucinogenic mushrooms for himself and Billet, and the evening before Took died, they both injected themselves with morphine. Took's death certificate records the cause of death as being asphyxiation after inhaling a cocktail, cherry. Drugs were not listed as a contribution factor, even though Took's death is often listed as a drugs misadventure. He was buried in Kensal Green Cemetery. So there's all the information there on Steve. Um... It's a shame again, and the amount of times I've said this over these videos and visits, um, the amount of young musicians usually um, that just get taken way too early for whatever reasons, complications of life, uh, not being managed properly, drug abuse, alcohol abuse, you know, um, any sort of addiction problems and things like that. And it's, um, it's just a shame, really, isn't it, when all this talent goes to waste and, you know, to, to lose his life literally three years uh, after Mark Boland's, well, very sad. Anyway, I've been having a good look around, and do you know what? I think I found it. I saw a baby fox a moment ago, but I think it's gone now. Um, these graves are so close together here. Okay. Let me turn around. And here we are. Okay. Let's just zoom in a little bit there for you. Stephen Ross Porter, Stephen Peregrine Took, 28th of July 1949 to the 27th of October 1980. Musician, always loved and remembered. And of course, there's a little T Rex there, a little gargoyle, and uh, what looks like a cactus of some sort. I'm not sure. So there's the final resting place of Steve Peregrine took Stephen Ross Porter. Now it looks like it's a bit of an angle. It is because the um, subsidence within the grey there, so it's a little bit skew if. Um, but I just want to say thank you so much, Steve, for your contribution towards the music industry. So many massive T-Rex fans around the world still to this day uh, listening to your music as well. So I love the little T-Rex there. It's brilliant. Um, so thank you. Bless you. And like I said earlier, guys and gals, um, these poor, talented people, uh, some may not say poor, because usually, not always, but sometimes it's self-induced, their demise, their downfall, if you like, or whatever happens to them in life. Um, but it's still sad, isn't it, when, it's sad when anyone goes so young. Um, but anyone that brings something which causes emotion to other people such happiness um, 
you know, sadness as well. Music can invoke sadness as well as happiness, joy, and all the rest of it. Um, but Steve there, same with his bandmate, Mark, you know, too young, too young. Anyway, please leave your comments down below if you liked the video today. And um, yeah, let me know your thoughts on that one. And if you haven't done so already, please give it a little thumbs up. And I will see you all very soon on a cold summer Kensal Green <laughs> morning in London. London, mate, London. Right. I'll see you all soon. Take it easy.